Well, hey there, Doc Newsom again. Uh, thanks for tuning in to our second webinar. This is, I'm pretty excited to get started and uh, be presenting all this information to you. Today we're going to be talking about the, the difference between treatment and healing. Okay, you got treatment on one side, treatment of disease, and on the other side you have healing. And the problem that we run into in today's medical system is that normally those two don't intersect very often. Almost always do they occur very separately. Um, i give you an example. The treatment of disease, <laughs> uh, my favorite analogy of treatment of disease is uh, a bad marriage. Okay, when uh, you know, the wife gets all irritated and inflamed and everything, and the husband has to treat her to settle her down. Uh, doesn't fix any of the problems, just, you know, treats her, gets her flowers, gets her chocolates or whatever. She settles down. A little while later, she's inflamed again because nothing's changed. The same problem is there. Um, and so she gets all inflamed. He has to treat her again, okay? And it just becomes a vicious cycle. And the, the end of the story is nothing ever gets better, okay? And that's with treatment of disease. Treatment is disease... Um, abates it does not resolve okay and there's the, the difference between abatement and re resolution is abatement is settling something down getting it to uh you know getting the inflammation to go down getting the swelling to go down uh okay but it's not resolving why that happened to begin with okay and why is what healing focuses on, okay? M medical treatment of disease focuses on what, okay? Is it a wound? Is it inflammation? Is it an infection? Is it, okay, you, you have one thing that they focus on, and that is what, okay? They focus on what is happening right now. Uh, because in conventional medicine, the, the whole point of conventional medicine is to keep people from dying. Okay? They don't have the concept of making people healthy. They have the concept and they operate within the, the parameters of keeping people from dying. Not making them healthier. It's keeping them from dying. So, in treatment of disease, what you can expect is to not die <laughs> from whatever it is that you're suffering from. In healing, on the other hand, in healing we focus on why. Why do you have a runny nose? Why does your back hurt? Why is your stomach upset? Why, 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 why? It's always why. Because in fixing why, what takes care of itself? Okay, now the process of healing is very different than the process of medicine. Medicine, you present with a, a symptom and you are treated with something that will settle that symptom down. Okay? In healing, you present with a condition and we have to go through a process to reverse that condition. The first step of the process is stabilization. Okay, you have to be stable in order to heal. No bleeding wound can heal. The wound has to stop bleeding first, okay? In leaky gut, you have uh, the wall of the intestines is inflamed, okay? Instead of being tightly knit together like this, it gets all inflamed and opens up. Now you have things can just wash through. The, it becomes hyper permeable, okay? There's things can flow through that membrane uh, much easier. So any parasites that you come into contact with, any microbes you come into contact with, any fungus, any virus, uh, any food that you consume, any water that you consume, freely floats into the bloodstream and uh, doesn't go through the full fermentation process that things are supposed to go through in order to be broken down into their very smallest molecules, okay? And so in leaky gut, we have multiple things that have to happen in order to stabilize it before it can even start to get better. 
Okay, first thing we have to do is stop the exposure to things that cause that irritation. Okay, so if you have food allergies, we need to test for food allergies. Discover what you may be uh, sensitive to. If you're sensitive to something, uh, and what's interesting, the longer you've had leaky gut, the more things you'll be sensitive to. Okay, um, with leaky gut, in that that uh, hyperpermeability, your immune system becomes more and more sensitized to more and more uh, molecules as you, you go on, you know, as time goes on. Um, because every time you eat, every time you drink, every time you consume something, it goes into your digestive tract and those molecules that haven't been broken down, you know, they're compounds, they're not molecules, they're these big compounds and they're floating into your, your bloodstream and every time you eat, every time you drink, your immune system has this, you know, level five alarm that you're under full-fledged attack. And so it goes out and, uh, uh, seats, you know, is, is on a search and destroy mission for all those particles that came into your bloodstream. Well, that is exhausting. <laughs> if you have that going on, you're going to be tired. You're going to be uh, worn out. Uh, yeah, eating uh, will always cause fatigue. Um, okay, so with, with this leaky gut, if we don't change what yeah, it's kind of like this is an analogy I like to use. If you say we scrub floors for a living, okay, but then we go out and we go rollerblading, we fall and we scrape our knees. Um, when do our knees heal? Okay, if we get on our knees and we scrub the floor for a living um, and our knees are all tore up because we fell on the concrete and uh, scraped our knees, until we get off of our knees, until we give them a break, they can't heal, right? Because there's, there's a constant irritation of being on the floor and on your knees, right? Well, if you're consuming foods that irritate your gut, as, as long as you keep consuming those foods, your gut's going to be irritated. So, uh, in the stabilization process, we have to change what you're eating, okay? Okay, but this also goes for, okay, let's say you have MS, or you have rheumatoid arthritis, or, uh, you know, we have some so other ca catastrophic degenerative disease, heart disease, cancer, or anything like that. Okay, all of these different conditions, in working in the healing process, first thing we have to do is change what you're doing, okay? Because for some reason, you ended up in the position you're in, you're ill, you ended up in that position because of things you've been doing for, you know, in the past, <laughs> okay? Uh, so all these things accumulate and eventually you have this uh, condition or illness, right? So in the healing process, we have to start with stabilization, okay? So by stabilizing, we have to remove the, the irritating factors that are feeding into the situation. Okay, so in the process of stabilization, there's kind of a, a two-phase two component to this step. One, we have, to, uh, we have to remove some of the irritation. Okay, we gotta, okay, if there's a, uh, in, you know, this is kind of graphic, but in an emergency room situation, if somebody's been stabbed by a, a piece of metal or something like that, that irritation uh, is going to maintain a very, very bad condition until you remove it, okay? We have to kind of get some of the, the irritants out of the way first. So like, again, with leaky gut, we got to change what you're eating, first off. That has, to, that has to happen. We have to do some sort of switch in what you're consuming. Number two, um, in order for Step two to operate properly, which is detoxification, you, you, the machinery has to function properly. Now, in our society, we have, uh, if you're on the standard American diet, all right, that means you're getting 17 out of 73 nutrients that you need every day, okay? Only 17, okay? This is right around 20% of the actual nutrients you need every day 
is supplied by the standard American diet. So that means you're about 80% deficient in nutrients that you need in order for your machinery to operate properly every day. So um, we have to change your diet, okay? And that hopefully would be to a diet that's more nutritious, number one, uh, a cleaner diet, a thing that's you know, organic, something that uh, has fewer and fewer irritants in it, number one. Number two, we have to supply you with nutrients. We've got to get those nutrients back into the matrix of your body so that the mechanics of the body, the, the enzymatic reactions and all those types of things have to be able to function properly so you can detoxify. And detoxification is our next step. And so if you're missing nuts and bolts, which if you're on the standard American diet, you, you're missing about 80% of your nuts and bolts. Okay, again, think about, uh, <laughs> think about your car. If we took, or just randomly took 80% of the nuts and bolts out of your car, how well it would it operate? It probably wouldn't operate, probably wouldn't even turn over. <laughs> okay, so if your body's operating on 20% of the nutrients that you actually need, uh, we need to supply those other 80% of the nutrients so we can get the machinery operating properly so you can detoxify. Okay, this is part of the nutritional stabilization uh, steps here, the very first step. And so with, uh, with like leaky gut, we gotta give some basic probiotics, we gotta get vitamins and minerals and cofactors and all those extra nutrients into the system so your liver can start operating properly, so your kidneys can start operating properly, so your lymphatic system can start draining properly, uh, and so your digestive system can operate properly. If you're, you know, any nutritional approach is dependent on proper digestion. <laughs> so if you don't have good digestion, the uh, uh, nutritional approach is going to be only is is going to take a lot longer for that to work if your digestion isn't working properly. So. Step one, stabilization. Step two, and this is this is my is actually my favorite step because it's in step two where people feel the biggest transformation. Okay, when you're correcting nutritional deficiencies in, in the stabilization phase, uh, people start to notice a difference. You know, uh, be, especially if they're very deficient in nutrients. The moment they start having nutrients in their system and in their body starts operating properly it's like they're a, they start to come alive it's amazing they just feel like oh my gosh you know I didn't realize I was feeling so bad um, but then the transformation takes place when we start to go through that detoxification phase step two in the healing process the detoxification phase is where it's kind of like cleaning out a dirty wound, okay? Or in, again, I'm gonna use the leaky gut um, analogy. If we have leaky gut, um, if you've had leaky gut for a long period of time, you're also going to have uh, overgrowth of, of bad microbes, particularly candida, a fungal infection. Uh, very frequently, you will have um, parasites, those types of things. Um, also, depending on whether it's upper GI leaky gut or lower GI leaky gut, um, let's, say, let's say it's in the colon, okay, in the lower GI. Your colon is a four inch in diameter tube, okay? Uh, but it has the capacity to distend and swell up to 16 inches in diameter, okay? <laughs> if, it, if it swells up that big, what happens is uh, the wall of the colon will start to get caked, waste stuck to it, okay? The waste will actually stick to the wall of the, the colon and uh, it starts to ferment, it causes gas, it causes all kinds of nasty things. But if the wall of the, the colon, as that expands and it distends, it becomes more permeable, okay? So it becomes leaky. Right? If it has waste caked on it, okay, and it goes from four inches to 16 inches, all that distension causes it to become more permeable. Now all that waste that's caked on the wall of the intestine floats right into your bloodstream. So 24 seven, 
you're being intoxicated from your own waste. Okay, it's horrible, absolutely horrible. And it's absolutely common. That's the worst part about it, is it's very, very common. And so, um, before you can legitimately heal, you know, we can stabilize you, we can get the nutrients into the system, we can get you actually get the machinery operating again, but until we clean out the wound, the wound cannot heal. Okay, if you have a sliver, <clears throat> if you have a sliver in the bottom of your foot, uh, the surrounding area is going to get irritated, it's going to get inflamed, and it's going to get infected. All right, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute. But until you pull that sliver out, there's going to be a continuous cycle of irritation, inflammation, and infection. All right. Same with the gut. Until we clean that out, it won't be able to go. The swelling can't go down. Okay. So we got to get got to get it all cleaned out in order for us to get that swelling to go down. When the swelling goes down, the leaky gut starts to heal. So we go back to the, the cleansing process, the detoxification process, that's step two. So we, we neutrify, we gotta feed the body differently, we gotta take some of the irritation away in phase one, in the stabilization phase. Phase two, detoxification, is removing every bit of irritation possible from your system okay we're pulling all the slivers out we're getting rid of all of that accumulated waste by I, here's something to remember when when it comes to toxins in your system okay your, your body's first response to toxicity is inflammation okay what is inflammation inflammation swelling why does the body respond that way well because if you take something toxic introduce it into the system the body can minimize that toxin it, there's a little jingle that says the solution to pollution is dilution okay and in the body this is uh, something the body does too if you have a toxin come into your system the body will surround it with water in order to dilute it okay that minimizes the impact on the rest of the body so you have a big old distended gut because you've got a leaky gut until we detoxify that and get all the waste out, there's going to continually be that inflammatory cycle and you're always going to have the distension. Irritation of the body always causes inflammation. The body always responds to any type of irritation with inflammation. Okay, so if you're toxic with something, you get injured by something, you uh, emotionally you're distraught, um, the body's response to that is inflammation, okay? Um, it's interesting to look at uh, chronic diseases and emotionally to go back in the person's past and find where they first started having the symptoms of their chronic illness. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's after some sort of traumatic event, either physical trauma or emotional trauma. That was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, and sometimes it's you know, more than just a straw, sometimes a ton of bricks. But <laughs> it's a, a, you know, a, a car accident or a, a, a death of a family member or a friend or um, a divorce or you know, these different types of things that are real traumatic happen and that was the initial trigger that that uh, the irritation that overpowered that person's ability to adapt therefore their body accommodated that situation and inflammation set in and became normal in their system and now that inflammatory process just keeps going and going and going okay the thing with inflammation is it feeds itself okay if you get inflammation in this joint it won't be too long before you have inflammation in that joint then you'll have this joint then this joint and you know okay it, inflammation expands and it, it feeds itself in the detoxification process is where we shut off that inflammatory process okay we got to pull all those slivers out of the feet we got to get all the waste out of the wall of the the colon we got to 
uh, flush the liver and kidneys out. We got to get that lymphatic system flowing in order for all the irritants to leave the system so inflammation can stop. Okay, if we don't remove the irritant, the inflammation will, will continue. So the, the process is irritation causes inflammation, which leads to infection. Infection is our fast track to degeneration. Okay, if you um, uh, have ever been around somebody that has, uh, uh, well, just think of how you feel when you get the flu. I mean, everything aches, <laughs> okay? The whole degenerative process, the whole inflammatory process just gets amplified with that virus. It just makes you feel so terrible. Um, and that's infection is our fast track to degeneration. But the, the stage for infection to take place um, is set by irritation followed by inflammation. Once you have that inflamed tissue, it becomes breeding ground for infection. Okay, once you have that, in, once you get uh, overgrowth of the wrong microbes, degeneration is the ultimate outcome of that. So, we go back to detoxification. Detox, we have to cleanse in order to stop this whole process. Cleansing is the key. Detoxification. And detoxification has to start in your gut, okay? Uh, in your kitchen, you got a dirty kitchen, and your garbage cans overflowing and all over the floor. Uh, it doesn't do any good to start cleaning the countertops, cleaning the stove, getting the dishes all cleaned up. If you're going to put them, those dirty, those clean dishes into the, you know, the overflowing trash in your kitchen, you got to take the garbage out first, right? You remove all the, you take the garbage out of the garbage can, get all the garbage in, all on the floor, all cleaned up. You get all that out of your system, out of the kitchen. Now you have a nice empty garbage can. You can clean the countertops. You can you know scrape the dishes. Whatever you got to do, you clean the stove, all that kind of thing. But if the garbage can's full, there's no place to put the trash, right? So it intoxicates the rest of the kitchen. Okay, so if your garbage can is full, <laughs> you, it doesn't do any good uh, cleaning your liver out, cleaning your kidneys out, trying to flush your lymphatic system, if the trash can's full, there's no place to put the garbage. So we gotta start with the gut. In detoxification, we start with the gut. We have to clean the gut out first. Um, next can either come the kidneys or the liver, and whatever comes out, those can be one or the other, they're interchangeable, then the lymphatic system has to clean out, okay? In, in that process, a lot of times if we, if we can clean the, the gut out first, detoxify the, the gut, the lymphatic system will start to start to drain. Okay, and as we we can through herbal medicines there's ways of enhancing the liver and kidneys ability to filter lymphatic fluid. And so a lot of times we start with colon cleansing, then lymphatic cleansing, then we move on to liver and kidney cleansing. A lot of times in, with uh, botanical medicines, the things that will cleanse the liver also cleanse the kidneys. So they're, they're actually very interchangeable. A uh, good example of that's burdock root. Burdock root um, is traditionally used for kidney stones and urinary tract infections, but it's also good for uh, hepatitis and swelling in the liver or, uh, you know, breaking down fat in the liver. It's, a, it's an amazing remedy for both the kidneys and the liver. And uh, uh, so we clean the gut out, we clean the lymphatic system out, then we have to clean our filtration systems. Once we get those clean and detoxified, then we can move on to really fixing the problem, okay? Fortification is the last last major step in the healing process. We got stabilization, detoxification, and fortification. And that fortification is, okay, now that we've got everything cleaned out, okay, we got all the systems operating, okay, the, all those missing nuts and bolts have been replaced, the machinery's working, we've removed all the slivers from the feet, we've got all the waste out of the, the gut, we got the filters filtering, Okay, now that the stage is set, 
we have to enhance metabolic functions, okay, particularly mitochondrial function, okay, mitochondrial function is paramount. If your mitochondria are not operating, neither are your cells, <laughs> okay, the mitochondria produce energy for the cell to do its, its job, okay, and if we don't fortify that, the cells don't do their job, or if they, they're doing it, they don't do it as efficiently. So in order to maximize our repair, our body's capacity to repair itself, we have to maximize our mitochondrial activity. And so that, in the, uh, in the fortification process, we have to replace uh, probiotics. We have to add in lots of probiotic. We've got to get the microbes in our favor. Okay, probiotics are pro-life. Okay, they give us more life. They're body building, not body deteriorating. Infectious microbes are body deteriorating. Probiotics are body building. Okay, we got in the fortification process. We got to get those probiotics in our system. Uh, number two, we've got um, we got to make sure we maintain our nutritional profile. We got to stay in positive nutritional balance. We got to have uh, plenty of those nuts and bolts for our body to repair itself. If it doesn't have raw material, it can't fix itself. So we got to keep supplying those, those nutrients so the body can heal. And that's how one of the aspects of fortifications. We got uh, probiotics, we got nutrition, and then we have mitochondrial support. Mitochondrial support um, in uh, my practice, what I've done for mitochondrial support for years has been my super earth energy formula. Uh, super earth energy is designed to enhance mitochondrial function and it's been super consistent. I just don't say super earth energy, but it's super consistent. It's worked over and over and over again. Um, and it's interesting that that's one of the things I've used in practice for 20 some years that uh, always helped because it was working with the mitochondria and getting the mitochondria to operate properly, we actually have more, a more functional ability of each one of our cells. Okay, if your brain cells uh, only have half of their mitochondria operating, that means you only have half the brain capacity. If your heart cells only have half of their mitochondria working okay, properly, you only have half of your your heart function. Same with your liver, same with your muscles, same with your your spine, with your brain, with your kidneys, your you know, anything like that. So in the process of fortification, it's pretty simple. We have probiotics, nutrition, we've got to maintain good nutritional balance, and then mitochondrial support. And finally, after all that said and done, okay, we have to keep up the good work. Okay, maintenance. Uh, you, <laughs> the thing with uh, with healing is healing is the process that is contrary to our process of degeneration. Okay, because of life, and you know, if you read the Bible, because of the curse that's put on us, there is degeneration, and it is a process and it's something that we have to contend with okay the healing process is like the anti-degeneration process it's it, it is what we can do to combat the whole process of degeneration that we're, we're we're subject to okay if we go from ill to stable then on to detoxified and then on to fortified our logical next step is maintenance. Okay, so we have to maintain good digestion. We have to maintain good uh, nutritional balance, meaning uh, we can't go back to the standard American diet where we're only getting 17 out of the 73 nutrients we need on a daily basis. Okay, we have to stay on a healthy diet. We have to stay supplementing with the nutrients that we need in order to rebuild ourselves. 
We have to maintain those mitochondria. There's also, at that point, we need to look at uh, optimizing hormonal balance, okay, where we're, uh, your, your thyroid's operating properly, your adrenal glands are integrating well with your thyroid, your uh, insulin metabolism's good, and then we have your reproductive hormones that, you know, all those first three sets of hormones, you get thyroid, adrenal, and insulin, those will make you or break you energetically, okay? They, you're either gonna be on and have energy if those are operating properly, or if they're not, you're not gonna have energy, okay? Um, you'll have energy if those are operating properly. You won't feel good until the reproductive hormones are, are operating properly. We get those reproductive hormones operating properly, then you actually feel good, okay? So you have energy and you feel good. And that's part of the maintenance component in the healing process. So we have, it's a very simple process. I'm gonna run through it one more time. We have stabilization, okay? No bleeding wound can heal. We have to stop the bleeding first, okay? Then we have detoxification. Again, no dirty wound can heal. We have to cleanse the wound, right? Then fortification, okay? If that wound is still open, even though it's clean, we have to close it. We have to pull those borders of the wound together so that it can heal properly. We gotta fortify it. We gotta hold it together. We gotta give it a hug and, and come alongside it and help it, help, it, help it along, you know, get it back on its feet. Okay, that's fortification. And then once the person is operating well again, we have to maintain the process. And for me personally, I'll give you my, my personal protocol. Um, I do a, a full-blown one-month detoxification program every three months. Okay, so the, I work on a, a fortification program pretty much. A maintenance program for three months then month four I clean house okay the reason being is we live in a contaminated world for me personally uh, every fourth month on the calendar I go through a, a detoxification program and in our, our upcoming webinars we'll go over those uh, the programs that we we use but um, I detoxify at least three times a year where I do a full, very, very targeted, very, very deliberate detoxification program every, uh, every, every fourth month. But during the, those three months in between, I'm doing things to enhance my fitness. I am doing things to uh, maintain uh, good weight, uh, good energy. Um, everything I'm doing is there to enhance my body's ability to heal because the better I heal the less I degenerate right so we want to maximize healing so we minimize degeneration and that's what we're all we're talking about so in closing I thank you for uh, tuning into our webinar check out our website at drnewsom.com uh, thank you very much. All information shared on these videos or our website have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. You should not use this information in the place of seeing a healthcare provider, nor for self-diagnosis or treatment of any health problem or as a substitute for medication prescribed by your physician. All information is for educational purposes only. As with any healthcare advice or before starting any dietary program, consult your healthcare provider.